Hello everyone, welcome to this edition of Talk of the Town. I'm James Milan, and this is a legislative update with our state senator, Cindy Friedman, who represents the 4th Middlesex District, that's Arlington, and a number of communities in the area. We may talk about them, but we're certainly going to talk about the uh, story here in Arlington as reflected through Cindy's work at the State House. So, um, you have been busy and productive, I know that. We've certainly been busy. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much, therefore, for joining us. And we don't get to see you in the flesh all that often. No. I haven't gotten to. No, this it's is the first while, time so. in a while, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'm very glad right. to welcome you here back to the ACMI right. studio, where we hope you will continue to be a regular visitor. Thank you. I really mean that. Um, so uh, I want to just start um, with the place we can never <laughs> escape from. Um, and that is, of course, the current situation with COVID. As we are now deeper into the holiday season, um, we have Delta running, you know, seemingly wild still in the country and Omicron now. Um, recent announcements out of the governor's office and et cetera. Just wanted to get your, your take on what you see from your perspective, you know, as a, as, as a state senator, but also your perspective as an Arlingtonian on uh, what's going on with COVID and what you anticipate. Sure, well, um, I think we're all anxiously waiting to get um, more consistent news on um, Omicron or Omicron. Um, you know, right now it looks like it's very transmissible, but um, doesn't seem, seems to be on the milder side. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're vaccinated and you're boosted, um, you know, it, they, it looks like it's, it's holding, that um, that protection is holding. But we're learning more every day. It's really new. Um, so we have to keep vigilant. Um, I took my PCR test before I came here. I've been boosted and I, you know, just can't encourage people enough to, um, to do that, to, to make sure that they get... Um, that they get vaccines, that you get boosted. And I know the governor has an announcement today about um, releasing some at-home tests, a number of them, to um, high-impact communities, which is good because testing and testing, the, the tests at home are quite reliable. And, um, and so we really want to try and get those out to people and um, so that people can test on a regular basis. Um, I think this is with us, and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna figure out how to live with COVID so that it becomes endemic and not a pandemic. But it's just very, very important that people get vaccinated and um, and you know wear masks in public places where there's a lot of people and and follow the guidelines, and that not only protects them and not only protects me to do that for me but it also protects everybody around us and mm -hmm. i'd like to see a little more civic engagement and civic you know uh, care for all of us and part of what you're doing is keeping yourself safe but you're also keeping other people safe so i, I really really encourage um, the vaccines and i think you know to people who are concerned about the vaccines what i would say is there's millions and millions of people who've gotten a vaccine and they've gotten it as far as a year ago, and um, it's it's pretty well vetted. And so I think when you compare the risks of getting COVID without a vaccine, and um, and getting a vaccine, it clearly right now the vaccine is yeah. is, is winning. I mean, the, the data is pretty irrefutable, the pretty and there's a lot of it now, right. as you were saying. And well over 70% 70, 70 of the people in hospitals in Massachusetts right now who um, are in, you know, are in hospitals because of COVID have not been vaccinated. Right. And so if you care about your, you know, sister who's a nurse or your sister who's a doctor or any, any one of your family members or friends who are working in hospitals, get vaccinated for them. Because can you imagine having to go through what they've gone through for the past um, almost two years, um, taking care of people nonstop in incredibly difficult condition? conditions to have people come in who just haven't been vaccinated. Right. And it's, it's very Yes, hard. and it's incredibly dispiriting. I've it's been very, noticing yeah. from the, you know, increasing volume of uh, healthcare workers who are coming out and just saying that, yeah. that this is really, really difficult right. when you're dealing with people who have gotten the message and simply refuse to do it. 
Um, can I just ask you a follow-up quickly on one thing, and that is the governor's announcement this morning about rapid tests being made available, you said, to high-impact communities. I know that there is, they, they said something like it's about a, around 100, a little bit more than 100 communities. Um, yeah. But I assume that none of those necessarily is, uh, are communities from the 4th District? I don't believe that we'll see. Th these are free at home. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe that we will, um, that my communities will see that, the 4th Middlesex. Um, mm -hmm. I think we are been pretty well protected. We're also fairly uh, well vaccinated. So right. Arlington is just amazing. And I, I need to give a shout out to the... Um, to the Arlington Board of Health, to uh, Christine Bongiorno and that group. I mean, they've just done an amazing yeah. job at getting people vaccines and um, and and setting up clinics and and just being dogged at at uh, at their job. So we think we're very lucky. And my my communities overall are well. You know, they're well on their way to being vaccinated at over you know six seventy percent. Right. Um, yeah, so. I th that's c partly why I was asking. Is that you know, in a sense. <laughs> these tests are meant to go to communities in which there's a high degree of vulnerability. The fact that none of the, right. your, the five communities you represent would be among them is really actually right. good news, right? In Absolutely. Good, good sign. And having said that, I think it's really important that we as a state look into um, how we can reduce the cost of rapid tests and get rapid tests available to everybody. Because even though we're not a high impact community and we're a, well, a relatively well off set of communities, $23 for two tests right. is, you know, it add, I mean, it's fine if you have to maybe do it once in a while, but if we're asking people to be safe and to, you know, to test a lot, that's that's quite a burden, $23 you for You are tests. so right. I, 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 I agree with exactly that point, uh, especially having thought of it and discussed it with my family members recently. Uh, you know, if that if you're doing that regularly, it's going to start to it's, mount it, up it, you for know, sure. Yeah. So hopefully something can be done about that. Yeah, so All right, we, we should move, let, let me just say one thing adding to what you have already said, and that is I think people need to understand, I as a vaccinated, in, you know, fully vaccinated person uh, about to get my booster, I still need to understand, and so do a lot of others in my situation, we should be masking. We should still be right. masking. And, right. Uh, in all public places or places where we were coming in to, you know, regular contact with other folks. And again, that's something that I have, you know, wanted to not have to right. do. Yeah, and no, it's, it's people are not getting... Not have to worry about, but we clearly do. Tired. Yeah. yeah, we're all tired, and we're six but feet still. apart, by the way. So. Yes, that's right. <laughs> exactly. We, we were careful to do that. We had... Uh, we had uh, Dave Rogers, our state rep, one of our state reps in here recently, and he was very clear that we needed to do that uh, yeah. as well. Um, so that's fine, and we'll continue to practice those things, of course. But yes, let us all stay masked. Uh, we may not want to. We need to. Um, all right, moving <laughs> on. Uh, I, I got notice, as did uh, the rest of your constituents recently, um, about um, you know some, some good news <laughs> coming out. Uh, of the state house that I, I invite you to share. It has to do with the combination of surplus funds for, uh, from the state and ARPA funds that came from the federal government. And together, that's a $4 billion pot, right? Yep. Um, and you guys have yeah. figured out how to allocate that. And I believe it's just kind of waiting for the government's, or the governor's tacit approval. Right, right, exactly. Point, yeah, yeah um, we did finally, we passed the ARPA and surplus spending bill. Uh, four billion dollars. Um, I know that what we tried very hard to do with the ARPA money, which is the money that's come from the federal government for states to use um, and is available over the next, now I think, five years. And we'll just say um, American Rescue Plan, Plan Act, Act, ARPA. Right, ARPA. Right. Thank you. And um, and so we, we've gotten, we've done a, a two and a half of about a four point something billion dollar um, uh, money from the government. So we've spent about half of it now. Mm -hmm. And what we tried to do is spend it on things that we could do in the, you know, that, that wouldn't add to um, our kind of bottom line of sustainability and everything, trying to keep these, this money going. But what could we do now that uh, really would help people over the next couple years and maybe s kickstart some things or fill in some gaps? And so um, that's what we did, and um, I'd, 
I think everybody's aware of the incredible, incredible workforce problem that we're having in Massachusetts and frankly across the country. Mm -hmm. It's really, really hit our healthcare system and, and our schools, education. People are really having a difficult time. I mean, all businesses are having trouble finding people, but we are especially feeling it in healthcare where so many people are burnt out. Um, they've left because the, it, they just, you can't work. You can't work 80, 90 hours a week for two years taking care of people and not just needing to stop. Mm -hmm. And so there's been a lot of um, early retirements and people aren't coming into the, into the field. So uh, what we've done is we've done a lot of focus on workforce and giving people hazard pay, getting people bonuses. Um, we've done a, over $123 million just in loan forgiveness for um, behavioral health and primary care. Um, we've uh, focused on our essential workforce, uh, health care workers, uh, um, health service, so people who work in group homes or, mm -hmm. or personal care attends, giving them um, some hazard pay, um, and again, looking at scholarships and loan forgiveness so that we can get people into the system um, uh, and so that we can keep these services going because uh, they're, they're critical and people aren't getting the care that they need because there aren't people that are coming yeah, into the and workforce. That's an, it's kind of an unusual thing, right, for the government <clears throat> to be doing yes. um, is really trying to get uh, incentives and rewards, in a sense, to people who are on right. the front lines of this particular war. Right. And, you know, this is a problem that's been a long time coming. I mean, um, if you just look at behavioral health care, we've so underfunded behavioral health care. We've so... Um, the rates that we pay people to um, to do these to deliver these services has been so low for so long, mm -hmm. and, um, and then the pandemic comes. It exacerbates things because people are sicker, more people need care, and um, the people who are providing that care are just saying, "I can't do this. I can't do it anymore. I can't make enough money to make ends meet because um, the rates are so low." So um, we really have to address that problem. It's something that the Senate has done and is doing a couple of times, uh, has done a couple of times, is continuing to do. But one of the things we're doing now is saying, come into this, come into these uh, programs, and we're going to pay your loans, mm -hmm. and and you know, significantly pay your loans. Not just here's a thousand dollars, but you know, up to a hundred thousand dollars for uh, a nurse practitioner or. Eighty thousand dollars for real, real money, real money, real money real that's money. Could, that could make a real difference. That will make to, a real to, difference to, yeah. to people's <laughs> lives. And and you know you you have aptly described what these what the folks that we're talking about are up against, and what you are able to do, what the government in this case is able to do, is address one of those right. needs, right? And let's hope that that is kind of successful enough to you know keep people in or get people to come in uh, to these these positions and these professions um, because clearly the the rest of the demands are going to are going to oh yeah they're going to be here for a long time yeah <clears throat> and we have to figure out how to fill the pipeline you know this is great for people who have a degree who you know uh, are, have been trained mm -hmm. but now we have to figure out how do we train the next generation how do we continue to get people into these mm -hmm. into these programs that um, you do because you love and you do because you care very much and are passionate about the subject, you're not necessarily going to get rich, but we need to make sure that you can earn a living and, you know, and take care of yourself. Um, and we need to start valuing those kinds of jobs. I mean, just personal care attendants, people who take care of people who are homebound, you know, uh, the folks that work in our group homes for, um, uh, people with developmental uh, disabilities. I mean, all of these, all of this human service space that we're so dependent on, mm -hmm. but we just don't pay for it. And now we're, we're reaping. Right. What we yes. We're reaping what we've sown. Yeah. So. I mean, it, as, as you've just described it, basically, there's clearly an element of dealing with the pandemic and the current emergency circumstances of that. Thinking about how to, as you said, fill the pipeline in, into the future, but also. You know, acknowledging we're backfilling here, right? right? We're right. we're we're just 
trying to make up ground not, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that we've lost in an insidious way over you know quite a yeah. quite a period of time. So, all right. Well, that's a good start uh, or a good way to address <laughs> that. Um, uh, tell us, you know, more uh, about what's in that package because I know, for instance, you have some programs that you and and some policies that are now going into law that that you have long championed and you were you know just had a lot to do with this stuff yeah well we um so within the arpa bill um my kind of role in the senate was the healthcare piece because mm -hmm. i'm the chair of healthcare financing so a lot of that behavioral health um the monies and and what we've done in, in terms of loan forgiveness has been our you know sort of been the work that we've been doing we also in the senate passed a a mental health bill yet again, um, which focuses on parity, making sure that insurers treat behavioral health uh, equally to mm -hmm. medical surgical, which by the way is the law of the land, but we haven't seemed to get there yet. Um, we've got some, um, so we've got parity, we address ED boarding, um, so e emergency department boarding, I'm sure you've heard about it, mm -hmm. is a huge problem right now. Many people are showing up to emergency departments who need um, care in terms of behavioral health, it's, uh, mental health, substance use disorder, and there's no place to send them. And so they're sitting in EDs, especially children, for very long periods of time. So we have a, a, um, a very focused piece of this bill is on moving people out of the emergency department and getting, especially children, getting care um, more uh, more quickly. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some great uh, collaborative care which allows for primary care and behavioral health and all of the the pieces that represent a, a true treatment for somebody coming in um, to their primary care. We now have uh, the bill allows for that to be paid for so that we can start to build these um, these team-based models. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so that, that there's some other things in the bill that we've been working on for a very long time and we're pleased to see it. And now we just have to get the house to take it up. And then we, you know. Is that, a, is that likely to be, pro I, 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 I'm just getting the sense from you that, you know, you're anticipating yeah. that that's not a smooth Well, we haven't heard anything. And we certainly, we did this last year and the house did not take it up. Um, now part of that could have been COVID, but. Um, mm -hmm. But we're just anxiously waiting to 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 see if they if they'll if they'll do it. And mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot to do in the healthcare space, so we're also hoping that we'll get some um, get some movement there. And then um, we've gotten done a a better job of getting money out to the district. You know, we've got um, I think, and along with my with my reps, um, we've gotten a lot of money for infrastructure. Um, yeah, the, so this is money now coming to Arlington, Arlington and then the Arlington other four and communities and you have represented. Lexington, represent. Lexington, Burlington, Bill Rick, and Woburn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've uh, getting a lot of money to food programs that are doing food security, like the Bill Rick, uh, um, a food pantry, Arlington Eats. We've gotten um, uh, money for Food Link. Um, we've done uh, given some uh, gotten some money for some affordable housing some in Arlington there's a, a, pro, a project in Lexington that we've um, that we've uh, looked at we've um, another thing that I'm actually quite um, pleased about and not just because we got some money but because they're doing it there's a, a partnership between the Burlington schools and the Woburn schools to provide primary care for uh, kids who are coming in as immigrants mm -hmm. and um, who don't have access to primary care. And so we've we got some funding for them to set up a, a program within the community so that these kids can get a strep test, get their vaccines, get, you know, just really basic services. Mm -hmm. But um, but I really um, was so pleased that that they came, that this was something that they were doing and something that we could help with. So right. there's a... a uh, just alone, just in our kind of what what we call local priorities, mm -hmm. um, we've gotten a you know over two million dollars for the district. So yeah, I mean, along that is with a, all the ARPA money that the schools have gotten and the towns right. have gotten, and, it's kind yeah, of a flood of of, is, of so funds. You know, yeah. it really is. And 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 I know that I've been speaking with local officials and uh, town manager Adam Chapdelaine for for months about the designation of the 
30 some odd million dollars of ARPA right. funding uh, right. for Arlington alone. And obviously it's a, a great problem to have, but yeah. you have to do it right. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, you really have to do it right, it right. seems like. And uh, I think the idea that you were describing earlier about the, that whole pot of ARPA funds for the state and how you have allocated in the current budget, at least, you know, for about half of that, leaving, yes. and that makes sense, right? Because there are, there are things that need to be addressed now. Right. And, but in, in a lot of ways, we, we need to be very careful about how we spend right. uh, the totality of the, these right. funds, right? Yeah. And I, I think I, I do want to say that, you know, when you, you're hearing about all this money coming in, and I know that people are um, talking about, well, why, are, why then do I have to pay taxes? And why do you know, this is money that's going to things that we have ignored for, for 30, 40, 50 years. This is roads and buildings and, you know, air vents for our schools and, you know, people who haven't had access to, to food for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are the kinds of things that we're putting the money toward. This isn't, this is, this, you think of it as a maintenance, you know, that finally some money's come in to, to get us to, sh you know, to allow us to shore up some things that we frankly have ignored for a very long time because it's hard to spend money on them. Yeah. And so this is really what this, um, what I think the state is trying very hard to do with this money. Can I can I ask you something, sure. um, you know, which is which is not not on script, so to speak, but but you know, as as you were just talking, I'm realizing, do you think it's a, what do you think the impact of having this kind of somewhat of a flood of money come in and having and being in this peculiar position of being able to say, oh, we can now spend. We have, we have the money to spend on these things that we've never allocated the money, enough money for before. Um, doesn't that, what do you think about the impact of that going forward in terms of, you know, will, will you guys as legislators, you know, be able to, to say, to follow up on this from now on, to, to say, okay, we, 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 we planted the seeds to start to deal with this these all these things that we've never adequately funded before and let's 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 keep that ball rolling how do you see that playing out or do you think it's going to go back to business as usual where there's just not enough political will to actually make the funding available to keep these programs built building well i think why it took the legislature a while to deliver these funds. I mean, remember when it came in, the governor had all the control and the legislature passed a, a <laughs> bill that said, no, 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 we're gonna, um, uh, we're gonna have some control over this. And then the governor you know, slammed all of us for taking a while. Well, the reason why we took a while was because we had to figure out, first of all, what the highest needs were and we did that through a whole series of public um, uh, uh, public hearings. Mm -hmm. And um, but the other thing is, is we had to figure out what money, how do we use this money so that we're not on the hook to continue to need this money, right? Mm -hmm. And that was why this was. What can we do now? So, can we put over a billion dollars into housing, or right? Can we do, what can we do in housing, which is so critical, that we can, that will get us to a place where we could start to build more affordable housing, or we can mm -hmm. fix the, um, fix our, um, like the housing authority buildings in Arlington. What can we do? Oh, we can put in new windows finally. We can fix the air, you know, we can fix the heating. And mm -hmm. we can, so part, a lot of what we did was to try and, and use the money in that way so we're not, quote, on the hook. At least we're, we've got some breathing room for the next 25 years till you, till you have to do that again. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we did with the surplus, which I think is really important, is we put money into the rainy day fund, mm -hmm. right? So we, re, we refilled the coffers of the rainy day fund to be ready for the next, for the next, for the next time. Emergency. Mm -hmm. Right, or next time that you know, our revenues go down. We funded, we did a huge funding for the pension system. Well, the pension system costs us lots of money when it's not funded. And, um, and so we put money in to shore up the pension system for people who are gonna be retiring. 
So I feel like we did um, a pretty good job in both of those spaces mm -hmm. of, of using uh, using our money wisely. Now, you know, it's a huge system. It's 40, our, what is our, um, uh, our uh, budget is $48 billion. Mm -hmm. Is someone going to come to me and say, look at this, this $200,000 got spent this way? <laughs> well, yeah, okay? Because <laughs> that's a lot of money to make sure that every single cent of it it's right. gonna it's gonna be something that you're gonna be happy about us spending or I'm gonna you know. Mm -hmm. But I think we did a pretty good job mm -hmm. and um and I think we were really cognizant of making sure that we didn't that we didn't start building things or paying for things that we couldn't continue to pay for. That's great. That that that's great news and you know, I guess I just want to you know, wanted to get out on the table that you as you have already described yourself, a certain amount of the the issues that you are addressing through the, this, the, these, this bill, this legislation, are things that just were ignored or, or underfunded or whatever for a long period of time. This is not going to solve all of that. No. There's going to be a period, whether it's the 25 years that we're buying in terms of infrastructure for some buildings or whatever, or whatever the breathing room is, there's going to be a point at which we're on the other side of that. Right. And I'm just hoping... Right. That the legislature, you know, can step up right. and r realize, okay, we planted the seeds to keep this, to have this healthy. Right. Let's keep moving forward. And, and I'm really, really aware of the fact that we still have a healthcare system that so many people can't afford or access. Our property taxes are, are skyrocketing. And for a lot of people, that means that they don't feel like they can live in their homes anymore. I mean, there are still structural um issues that we have to deal with and um, and and we can't p let down our guard because we've gotten some money that will, you know, um, we just have to figure out how to make things less, less expensive and how to have a feeling that we have enough, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. and we can share and we can, you know, focus on things that keep people healthy and, and safe and um, productive, so. Um. Cindy, no surprise that time has flown, and we are we are right uh, near the end of our allotted time. But I am, ju I definitely want to just ask you, hey, is there anything major that we should have talked about or should um, that that we missed, as far as you're concerned? Um, I not the. <laughs> I didn't think of, but okay. um, you know, and as I always say, we are available to our constituents. We, um, I still do virtual office hours, so people can um, go on my website and um, or call our office and find out if they want to talk to, when do they talk to us? And um, I just want to put a shout out to my fabulous staff who's just been working nonstop, and um, we are. We've never stopped working. We may not be in the state house, but we have been working, <laughs> and uh, you know. So, and it's it's right. In fact, you, you don't get to leave your right, workplace right. these days. <laughs> yeah, so, right. yeah, I'm sure you and your staff have been, yeah. you know, putting in the hours big time. Uh, I I have praised you praised you for this before, but I can't not say, um, really appreciate your straight talk. Just the fact that you come in here, you're willing to address. Whatever it is that I have to ask you, in, you know, straight to uh, the facts, and again, not with any <laughs> political puffery. And <laughs> I, I, and I'm sure the audience really appreciate that. So, um, thanks. I want you know, I, I told you we were happy to welcome you back in the studio at the top of the broadcast. Let me just repeat that, and I do look forward to our next conversation. And I wish you happy holidays, safe holidays. And, uh, and a little bit of rest. Yes, thank you. Well, it's always great to talk with you, and the time always goes fast, and I really appreciate you and um, being able to do this. So right back at you. All right, well, thank you. Okay. I have, of course, been speaking with Cindy Friedman, who is our state senator, and um, this has been Talk of the Town, a legislative update. Thanks so much to Cindy for joining us. Thank you for joining us. I'm James Milan. We'll see you next time.